Hello, and welcome to The Comic Conspiracy, episode 24. It's not episode 24. It is. No, it's not. It's a very special It's episode. a special. It's not an ep- It doesn't get an episode it's number. It's episode 24. It's oh, a very geez. special episode of The Comic Conspiracy. Uh, I'm Ryan Higgins. I'm joined by my always faithful companion. Brock Sager. Brock Sager. We will also have, for all of those that hate just me and Brock, we have two special, special guests on tonight's episode of uh, the comic conspiracy, we are joined by our own Geekboxes, Ryan Scott. Hey, some of you may know this guy. Yay! He's, all right, he's the popular one. He's the one you all love. I'm the, I'm the real Ryan. You're yeah. the lesser Ryan. Yeah, he's. Uh, so. For those that that don't know that this podcast was kind of spawned off the Geekbox, which is another podcast we record here at Comic Conspiracy, and Ryan runs that, and uh, he hates all comic books except for one comic book, which is the comic we're going to talk about tonight. No, that's not true. Ryan likes comics. We're not going to talk about the comic tonight? No, no, no. We're, we're going to talk about that comic, the oh. one you like. Okay. But that's not true. You actually like a bunch of comics. And we also have another guest. And we do have another guest. We have a great customer of mine and a Suicide Squad super fan, Gage. Gage, yeah. you want to say hello? Hello. How's it going? Good. Good. I'm glad to be here. Thanks Excellent. for having me. Excellent. Uh, we're going to have you... Uh, and Ryan here kind of talking some Suicide Squad as we uh, basically spend the whole episode talking about the Suicide Squad. Sweet. We kind of pimped this a little bit last week. And uh, when we started this podcast, me and Brock sort of said, hey, you know, we want to have specific episodes about kind of specific topics or subjects or or, yeah. or like one series or, or, or in a cool event or something like that. And 23 episodes passed. <laughs> it's a lot of work, actually. We never really sat down and did it. So we're like, we're trying to actually break out of that and, and do a whole episode based on one subject. Well, and we're starting with, you know, an, a kind of offbeat comic, well, which we, 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 you and I both love offbeat comics. Yeah. So it, this is kind of a good start. It's offbeat, and we kind of pushed it off a few weeks because uh, DC was relaunching all their titles, and The Suicide Squad is one of the new titles, so I figured this mm-hmm. was a great time to go back, talk the about... very, the- very slutty Harley Quinn. Yeah. Go back, talk about the... That's fine. <laughs> talk about the original <laughs> series, talk about the new series, and uh, yeah, just kind of just chat some Suicide Squad. We'll be back next week for a more normal episode, but, but in the meantime... Let's talk some Suicide Squad. Actually, I, I think the more interesting way to start it out would be to have our two fine guests kind of give their their Suicide Squad story. Cause we'll, like, we'll talk about what the squad is and everything like that, but but let's let's because Ryan, you don't read. Well, we'll start with you. What I don't read what? We don't. No, no, what? no. You're not a huge comic guy. I mean, myself. Gage. I have my phases. I go. Th- I'm, I'm fans of very specific <clears throat> comics. Right, right. Right. I have a whole lot of Justice League books. I like the question. I yep. like the Suicide Squad. Planetary. I, planetary. That's a good one. I'm not like a super comics generalist like you are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so why but, why did this book kind of – How do you remember how you got, kind of got into this book? I don't know. <laughs> it, the concept's just cool. It's basically like a spy book with super villains yeah. almost. Um, but I – I, for whatever reason, totally love the Suicide Squad, and um, so much that I, I wrote the Wikipedia page. Actually, I know. Um, I will. I will be in Mar- right. There's, there's, there's a big chunk that I still need to like rewrite, but yeah. Well, I saw your Mine. page when you originally did it, and that thing was immaculate with well, that, information. That was back before I read Wikipedia's um, rules about not. Uh, exhaustively um, describing every little thing <laughs> that happens in a work of fiction. And, and you do like doing that. So I was like, oh, this uh, miniseries description is like nine paragraphs, and I pared it, I pared it down to two. <laughs> so that happened. But uh, huh, I did that. I own, I think, every appearance they've ever made in a comic book. Um, Not the Silver Age stuff. You're talking like... Well, I have, I have the trade that collects all that. Okay. Which is uh, Star Spangled War Stories, right? Uh, the the um, the sh- <coughs> showcase presents. showcase, right? The black yeah. and white reprint one. Yeah. Or what is it? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, no. I mean, the original book was Star Spangled War Stories, but the collection is is uh, showcase since the the war. Well, war the time time for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's where the original, original, like old, dumb Suicide Squad. Stuff uh. <laughs> the not cool one. Yeah. So. So you don't even remember how you got into it. I don't. But I think I was reading. I, I, I'm a big fan of Justice League International too, and they had a crossover uh, issue yeah. where they fought the squad. And I think that's what prompted me to be like, Ryan, what's this? Uh, issue thirteen. Yeah, that's a good one. And um, 
And you told me about it. And oh, yeah. And I was like, cool. Um, Gage, how yes. about you? No, I think uh, you're, I, you're an original fan, aren't you? Well, no, I, I actually I actually came to the book after it had been canceled. Um, but that didn't mean I didn't love it and wasn't looking for it. Um, actually, uh, my uncle had sent me a manila envelope of uh, comics – and uh, there were, you know, just five random comics in there, and there was an issue of Justice League, and, and so I kind of got into that. And um, I'll never forget, we were going vacation somewhere, and so we were flying out of SFO. And Oh, well, actually, I'm skipping ahead. Um, so I had gotten Justice League before before um, they rebooted for Crisis. So when okay. they did the new Justice League that later became international um, – I was in Santa Cruz, and I found issue one and two. Cool. And so I actually brought that issue. An issue is that your actual? That's the, that's I mean, the you actual tell issue. It's got like nicks, and it's probably been read about fifty <laughs> times. But there is a house ad in it for the Suicide Squad, and it's clearly something they just whipped together. I mean, it's a gray panel with six wanted posters and then at the top it says wanted and at the bottom it says suicide squad they get a chance to die for their country and at the time i mean i think like a lot of us who were born you know 70s early 80s our first experience with dc revolved some way around the super friends so everybody i knew was somebody who was on the super friends so i looked at these six uh wanted posters i'm like i don't know who these people are but they look like badasses <laughs> and they're all you know wanted by interpol or the fbi um and you what? know I, I had no idea who these people were but it, yeah. that had always stuck with me so i'm like oh i gotta find these books and you know i'm sure what happened is given that name it was not something carried in a normal 7-eleven grocery store yeah yeah probably had. probably not on the spinner racks exactly so i recognized the name but i couldn't find it anywhere so we were flying we were going somewhere on vacation we were flying out of sfo and i went to the newsstand and they had issue 12 and 13 of the justice league which i had obviously randomly gotten a couple of the first issues and 13 is that crossover issue and i'm like oh my god i have to get this <laughs> and so you know as a, i was probably 10 at the time i had probably five bucks in my pocket that i was taking to buy you know whatever i was going to get while on vacation and i spent the majority of it in the airport before we had ever left. And my dad was so mad. He's like, you're spending your money on this? We haven't even got where we're going. You're already blowing your wad and you're going to buy this. I'm like, this is what I want. And I think it's probably a good purchase because whatever souvenirs my family bought, those are long gone, but I still have those issues. So, Well, cool. That's, that's, that's some good stories. Now, it's funny because you kind of mentioned that they're these kind of more obscure characters. I mean, I've talked about this once or twice on here that, I mean, the first comic I bought was Dark Hawk. And it's like, you know, I see a stand of X-Men and Spider-Man and it's like, I don't know who these characters are. I don't really care about them. Yeah, I mean, I know who they are, but I'm not really here. Ooh, who's this, this kind of cool side character? Oh, Dark Hawk. Sure, I'll pick this up. It looks interesting. I mean, the Suicide Squad is definitely that same sort of deal where, where you know, it's they're not the standard character. And, of course, they're never going to be a big seller, but it's a it's a great concept which we should actually now probably talk about the book yeah and, and yeah yeah well hey, you know it's good to get to kind of get some intro here to who everyone is and sort of out there yeah 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 <clears throat> so suicide squad brian you, you're you and in, engage in, can fight over who has the most encyclopedic knowledge of the suicide squad but for the moment let's uh i'll defer to ryan because i'm sure he's got it well according to the wikipedia page <laughs> with somebody wrote. we know wrote <laughs> that you the, wrote the suicide squad also known as task force x actually the name of a closely related but independent supervisory <laughs> organization is a name for two fictional organizations in the dc comics universe now this was an original book. Uh, this is a Silver Age, like a late Golden Age, early Silver Age book that came out. Or, or there, there's, there were stories inside. You said it was a Weird, a weird the, World Terror? The Brave and the Bold oh, was Brave where they debuted. Oh, started. Okay, okay. Um, now, now, the original characters were I – mean, the original concept was, was di- much different from sort was, of the relaunch we're all kind of interested you in. You could argue it was basically the challengers of the unknown. Sure. It was sure. four non-superpowered regular people right. fighting monsters, right. which right, right. at the time was pretty popular. And so it got a three-issue tryout, and then 
10 issues later, they tried it again. Yeah. And those six issues were the only ones they did. Yeah. That and, was, and it, it, I mean, as far as I'd ever heard, it didn't do very well. Yeah. No, I mean, they were created by Robert Kaniger and, and Ross Andrew, who have a, a big career at DC in the Silver Age. I mean, they were involved in a lot of different titles at the time. And kind of during those years, especially, DC was just throwing out all sorts of garbage to see what could stick in all these anthology titles. And so this name Suicide Squad kind of was like, yeah, okay, whatever. We're done with this. Uh, until Crisis on Infinite Earths, which is where DC kind of did their big... That was the, the big post-crisis right. sort of relaunch of the DCU. Right. They kind of came back through and they said, look, we're going to totally redo everything. We're going to start the books over. We're going to kind of tr- reintroduce continuity and re- and bring back a, a bunch of old characters, start new stuff. Going to bring like um, Blue Beetle and uh, the Question Series started a little after. They kind of ramped up uh, Green Arrow. They kind of did all the stuff the years after Crisis. And, and of course, one of the books that... Uh, Lasted and lasted, what is it, how many issues? 66. 66 plus. Plus a special and, special a, and a Doom Patrol and, crossover, yeah. yeah. And it was Suicide Squad. Now, this, right. is, a very, this is a very much a different Suicide Squad <laughs> than, than the original Golden Age, uh, Silver Age version. Well, the way that they were introduced into Legends is that, you know, in Legends, yeah. Darkseid is trying to take over the world, right. as he often does. <laughs> and um, they introduced this new character named Amanda Waller, who's this, like, government... Uh, representative, All right. and she puts together this team of of incarcerated supervillains to go and fight um, um, Brimstone, who is this this minion of uh, Darkseid that's causing all kinds of problems. So they fig- she figures like, well, I'm going to get all these guys together, these villains. If they die, who cares? And if they they kill them, we'll commute their prison sentences. And um, that's the suicide. That's the basic concept of the Suicide Squad. Um, you know, and after that, they were popular enough that they they had their own book, right. and um, yeah, it went on sixty six issues. I don't know, I don't know um, how if that's like a long run for back then because I was it started in nineteen eighty seven, ended in ninety two. Um, nowadays, that would be considered like outside of something like Superman or Batman or an X Men book, like that's a long run. Sure. Well, and it was also considered the, at the time it was the longest run by any book starring villains because the argument is made that even though you have a handful of good characters in it or uh, characters who are trying to be good, they are all villains. And so at the time it held the record. I guess uh, – well, we can get into it, but I guess Thunderbolts conceivably could take that title now. But yeah. you would totally argue that the reason we have Thunderbolts today is because we had a book like Suicide Squad to begin with. Oh. And and also jumping back to, to the comment about Legends, I mean, the reason they needed the villains to do it was, um, for those of you who are Marvel fans, you might recognize this plot line, um, superheroes were outlawed. And so they had no way of stopping this villain. And they're like, well, we can't send Superman in. He's been outlawed. The president can't have him go. So they had to come up with a way of dealing with it. And I mean... You could argue that Civil War basically was Marvel's version of of Legends, and and even with uh, Thunderbolts, where they were, you know, they were run by uh, it was a Baron Simo, right? It was it was a group of villains who were posing as heroes when the Avengers were gone, and they're like, cool, we're going to get into good graces of everyone and take over the world. But after a dozen issues or so, pretty much all of them were like, no, we like being good guys. I don't get that the Suicide Squad ever wanted to be good guys. They've pretty much always been bad guys, and they they like being bad guys. It, clearly, you know, some of the characters kind of, you know, they 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 lighten up as time goes on. But at the end of the day, they they are really, you know, I would have a hard time calling the Thunderbolts villains past the first couple of issues. I mean, that was the whole point of the series. They were fighting for redemption after right. a point. Sure, no, and and one of the things that the Suicide Squad. I mean, basically, if you've got a name like that, you've got a bunch of people who have major issues. And right. that was the thing that made this book work is every character in there had a major flaw. Right. Some right. sort of reason why they would basically be like, yeah, I'm willing to do this and possibly die. Um, you know, they were all looking for something. Right. Uh, if it was just to have their sentence commuted or they were looking for some sort of deal on the back end, whether it was help or, you know, there, I want this. There were some virtuous characters and it wasn't just a bunch of villains no it, well it, um but they were all sort of coerced into it or kind of tricked into going on the missions so that the main core team uh, were mostly 
still bad guys, even 66 issues in. I well, mean. Yeah. And, and everybody had an ulterior motive for being there. I, I mean, it, it could have just been, you know, Rick Flagg's big ulterior is to carry on. And he was basically told, carry on for me, carry on for me. So he felt it was his responsibility to be there for these people that he had lost before him. But every, every one of the characters uh, has some reason why they're there. Now, I, you know, it's funny because there are some great characters that were sort of throwaway characters before Suicide Squad. But because of the squad, they became much, much more interesting and much more layered characters. Um, I actually think it's funny that the Suicide Squad introduced possibly two of the most important characters in modern comics. And or, I, well, well, I will uh, say first, Amanda Waller, because right. she's in the DC movies. She was in the Green Lantern movie. Mm-hmm. She is basically going to be the Nick Fury of the DC movies. Is she? Are they really going to use her like that? That's what they've that would, said. That would be sweet. Uh, assuming they, they're able to continue. Well, she was also in Smallville. Right, she was in Smallville. Assuming they're able to c- 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 uh, continue the DC movies in continuity like Marvel. And even though a minor character uh, in the book, she was never a major uh, a point of focus of the book. Suicide Squad is also the first appearance of Oracle. And she actually, towards the end of the book, they yeah. actually, if the book had continued on, they... Uh, she would have been. They set it up as if anything ever happened to Amanda Waller. Right. She would. She actually approaches her and says, I'm looking to the future. Would you be the person to step in and take over? Yeah. And, and there are, I mean, there are um, issues towards the end where they deal directly with the killing joke and, right. and stuff like that. So she does have her, huh. her moment in the spotlight. Yeah. No. Her, her first appearance as Oracle was in Suicide Squad. Right, right. For those who don't know, Oracle is Barbara Gordon, the former Batgirl who was shot and paralyzed by the Joker and becomes this basic supercomputer genius that – for all intents and purposes, pre the new 52 titles was probably the single most, if not important, kind of the linchpin, kind of essential to the superheroes because especially in later years, they basically set her up as the entire communication network for all the heroes. She ran the Birds of Prey. She basically ran the Justice League for a long time. And and in the 90s, she ran Batman in a lot of ways. Right. I mean, I think right. they kind of took him away from right. using her because they're like, well, he needs to stand on his own. Right. So, yeah. Um, but there were so many great characters in, in, in the original run. I mean, lots... Oh, Ryan. Well, well, let's... Hold on. Dial this back a bit. Okay. We, we did not mention that this incarnation of the Suicide Squad, um, created by John Ostrander, right. who right. actually wrote... The entire run. Right? The entire 66-issue run with a couple of... There were a couple of guest writers here and there, but he stayed on for the whole thing. And, um, you know, DC kind of saw... It, it was like a clearinghouse for all their D-list villains. Well, and it was more than that. It was also a clearinghouse for for dangling plot lines from store, from other books that got canceled. <laughs> they literally... I really? Mean, oh, yeah. Power of the Atom. Think of all those oh. issues. Those are a, a lot of storylines that from books that got ended. They go, well, who's going to deal with this? Ostrander basically took characters that nobody cared about. Uh, and, I mean, they, he basically said, I went through the who's who's um, that, you know, were published at the time. And I just went through and I said, ooh, I like the way this guy looks. Can we use him? And he, he said in interviews that – the more obscure, the less used it was, the better it was for them because they could basically say, we'll do whatever we want right. with them. No, one, no one's worrying about uh, selling javelin uh, under ruse or lunchboxes, you know, it, as, as awesome as that would be. Exactly. I mean, they, they took characters that nobody wanted and they're like, we'll, we'll give them a story and we'll make them awesome. Are you yeah. telling me nobody wanted Sportsmaster? <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone want Sportsmaster now? Does anyone want Killer Shark or King Shark? Or <laughs> Well, King Shark actually wasn't Created until after the run was over. Now he was in the super the Superboy guest appearance, by right? The but those were written by Carl Kessel, who was the anchor on the original script, right? Yeah, that's and King knowledge. Shark. King Shark is in the new suit. Man, watching you well. two geek out over this is great. <laughs> Sorry, you want you have anything to share? Oh, I mean, I, I well, I've only read the first trade, uh, the Trial by Fire, and uh, I really enjoyed it. Like, I mean, I've gotten glimpses of. The Suicide Squad from reading the Justice League International and a couple other titles, um, but I really liked Trial by Fire, and it was nice yeah, to kind of see. Well, actually, actually, here's a question for you because you have read the trades, and I haven't. 
do they have the Suicide Squad issue of the JLA crossover in the Justice League International trade? Yes, that, it's in the Justice League International trade. Okay, okay. I, yeah, I believe so. And and the next one, which comes out next month, right? The, the second trade of the Suicide Squad, it it's being solicited as also having with the, the Justice J- League. Okay, so, okay, okay. So they are including. Very, I mean, it, it wouldn't work any other way because right, because it, it was a clear two part. You have to read both parts. Yeah. Well, not only was it a clear two part, it was one of the cooler covers where the Justice League cover was the Justice League fighting the Suicide Squad from one side, right. it, meaning you well, saw the fronts of certain characters, right, right, and right. then the Suicide Squad issue had the, the, reverse, the reverse of, that, of the, right. the fight, so yeah. you had the fronts of the other characters and right. the backs of the ones right. you had on the other cover. Yeah, no, because I mean, I just finished up with the Justice League stuff um, about uh, what they're on issue, or Trade 6 finished up a couple months ago. And then, but they did have the Suicide Squad appearance. Yeah, this one, issue thirteen. That's your, that's the that's one your I nice have. little one right there. Yeah. yeah, and then they have the Suicide Squad one, I believe. Hold on. Yep, Suicide Squad right there. Yep. So, and Clyde, I think we can all it's see issue this. thirteen and issue thirteen. <laughs> well, because they they were both launched out of Legends, yeah. and, and that's what they were doing at the time was they would, you know, have a big book, and then they would have two or three books that launched directly mm-hmm. out of that. And uh, apparently, Ostrander said that the name Su- he he went in to pitch other things, and somebody said, "Well, what can you do anything with the name Suicide Squad?" And he said, "That's the dumbest name I've ever heard." <laughs> and then he goes, "Well, who would who would be on something that's got such a stupid name?" And they actually in the book, I mean, it's it's very self aware. They point yeah. out, mm-hmm. I mean, who's going to be a part of this, and, and they they. Talk they, about that it's not healthy for the people right. to be on a team called the Suicide Squad. Right. So, they, yeah. so they, they, they officially call it Task Force X, which, if you remember, our, uh, me and Ryan's uh, great World of Warcraft guild, which was, which was, Task which was Force, called Task Force X Task Force because X. it would not let me put the name Suicide in the, right. in the guild right. name. Exactly. So, well, and I don't know if this is the case now, but I know at one point, given the rise of the letter X in comics, um, I think they couldn't at this point call it Task Force X because it would be possibly confused with Marvel, Marvel and would all of their get stuff. Off of it. So yeah, it's possible. I, I I mean that's at least another reason why they would said can you come up with something with this name is yeah. you know companies are constantly trying to come up with a way of publishing the old names so they yeah. don't lose the rights. Yeah. Well, in in Trial by Fire, it, like Ryan was talking about this earlier, where it's villains and stuff, but they're not all villains. I mean, well, Ench- Enchantress is in there, kind of not well, from the. In- well, she's not from the Enchantress. Splitting hairs there. Well, it's splitting hairs because she is actually splitting personalities. Well, well, it's let's just two say, different let's, personalities. Let, let, let's kind of go over the major characters. I mean, one of the great things about Suicide Squad is that there are so many B list and D list and F list characters that, <laughs> well, that get killed off. But there, I mean, there's but there, a few that there's I mean, core. There's a few characters that like their identities are completely wrapped up and associated and, with. And, this book. and you like, have to start with Rick Flag. I mean, he, for all intents and purposes, he is the Suicide Squad. Well, and he was the only character from the original thing that they brought over. Well, no, that's not true. They brought one other, and they have the others in a flashback. But he's the only one that consistently you saw in the first some odd books, which I won't get into. Yeah, he's their their field leader. Right. He's he's sort of Amanda Waller's trusty. No, he, he he was like a former military right guy he was colonel flag okay right and then sort of he just sort of got drafted into this well they they um in uh the secret origins uh book secret origins number 14 that leads into suicide squad number one we see it's sort of like the the origin of rick flag and Mm -hmm. kind of what's led him to do this and they sort of retcon in this original uh squad that his father was a part of during the warriors and he's he's sort of there carrying on that legacy. Okay. Um, so he's Colonel Flag Jr. And um, this is also in the Trial by Fire trade. Yeah, uh, which was nice because it, yeah, it really it, it really is. Yeah. It's you know for all intents and purposes, it's the zero issue. Right. right. It's, yeah. it's a good. It's a really good setup for for getting into the Suicide Squad. I'm just kind of going down Ryan's list here. Uh, we, we have to talk Captain Boomerang. Let's talk Captain Boomerang, Deadshot, All right. Bronze Tiger, Count Vertigo. Okay, well, let's do this. I'm just going down <laughs> your list here. So we started with Amanda Walla. Let's go Bronze Tiger next. Do you, do you have my list of, of, of appearances? I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm looking at your Wikipedia page here oh. right now as we go through it. Okay. So, so probably. Wait, who are we talking about? So Bronze Tiger. So Well, Bronze Tiger, let me see. He was a member of the League of Assassins. Correct. 
who which was which was uh, <laughs> see me and is, Ryan. I can, need, I can name that in two notes. Uh, me, no. me and Ryan need the computer to kind of be like he was gay. Just like yeah, I know. Okay, I hold, know. Hold, hold. Everybody who's listening right now. Go to the Wikipedia page for the Suicide Squad and look at it yeah, while you can, you're listening you can, to this. You can, you can read along with follow, it. Follow along. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but that that was um, a, a Batman right. uh, organization. Right. And Bron Sire was a character who was – he was brainwashed into being like this evil guy. Yeah, and, again, not really a villain, but – And he – well, he's there. – first, Bron Sire is like – he's this martial artist. He's He's – Always on the short list of like greatest martial artists in the DC universe that could hold their own with Batman, and um, he's basically on the squad to sort of atone for his sins. Right. Well, he was he was the sidekick character in uh, Richard Dragon right, right, Kung right, Fu, right. but he was just Ben Turner, and that book got axed at. 18 and in the 18th issue he gets kidnapped and disappears and that's then he like turns 70s up. right I mean, yeah oh it's yeah, yeah like 70s. Early 70s. and then he turns up as the bronze tiger and richard dragon has to fight him and then that was it that book got canceled so again it's a it's a plot line that got kind of left dangling he right. turned up in an issue of detective and they you know he was basically a bad guy in that I- issue yeah. and then again he just kind of disappeared and so it was a character that was just out there, and they're like, well, this is a cool character. Let's take that one. Yeah. And he's sort of the – when Rick Flagg's not around, he's, he's kind of the team leader. He's, 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 yeah, yeah. he's, he's number, the number two. two. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so he was in the vast, vast majority of, of issues of the mm-hmm. original Suicide Squad run. Um, and there's Deadshot. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, it's Captain Boomerang's next oh. on our list. Let's, well, Deadshot let's, uh, – but Deadshot's way more. <laughs> I'm just trying to do this alphabetical Deadshot, so we don't miss anyone. I mean, Deadshot was the breakout <laughs> star. Right. If, okay, if let's there, do If there was one, I mean, this he got his own Dead, miniseries. Deadshot right? was a Z-list Batman villain that had made he was, maybe a half dozen appearances yeah. prior to Suicide Squad. If that. If that. Deadshot was a villain in – correct me if I'm wrong. When he first appeared in Batman – he wore like a top yeah, hat. Yeah. He was like this gentleman, like assassin. Right, exactly. It was issue yeah, fifty five, yeah. yeah, and he and was of the of Batman. Of Batman. So okay. I mean, you're, that's if fifty five would be, yeah, forties. Yeah, forties. Yeah, yeah, long at, ago. Find a showcase, maybe. Yeah. And he, so he's this just forgettable, stupid Batman villain. Yeah. And I, I don't know the the uh, origin of how he got his like current costume and all that, but he's like. Well, what it was was Marshall Rogers during that. Cool run where you got the uh, the Laughing Fish story. Uh, his cool run on Detective, and that oh, was okay. in they reintroduced Deadshot. He reintroduced Deadshot, right. and he goes, "Well, it's a cool idea, somebody with guns, you know, but he needs a better costume." And yeah. he came up with that costume that's the iconic look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and even from there, he got maybe two appearances there, maybe two more when Detective and Batman would run, you know, yeah. both halves of the story, so you'd have to pick up one and then pick up the other. And then that was it. He, You know, yeah. a, a Z-list character yeah. that they're like, yeah, it's cool, but we don't need him. And they basically turned him into, I mean, easily one of the best characters, I, I think, out of the book, and maybe one of the best characters in DC, in the DC when, universe. I mean, they used him in, um, in a, uh, Gail Shimon used him in Secret Six, uh, or, um, and, um, what the heck was the other book? Um, Villains United, and, um, he, he showed up on the cartoon in uh, the right. Justice League uh, Justice cartoon League, yeah, where right. he shows up to try and assassinate Aquaman. Right. I mean, he went from being nothing to somebody that people wanted to use. Yeah, yeah. yeah no. He okay. He um, I mean, Suicide Squad basically turns him into this like deranged, you know, super capable assassin with a death wish. Right. He wants which, to die. And which is funny. He has a death wish, and he's on a team called the Suicide Squad, <laughs> and he is perhaps the most prolific <laughs> character in the entire run and survives the whole thing yeah. and is still around to this day. Yeah. Despite trying to basically... He, he won't get himself killed, but he's he's like, yeah, if I can kill, whatever. Yeah. I mean, he's basically willing to take the missions because he, he's like, well, yeah, if I die, I die. Yeah. Have they done an origin for him? They did. They well, did a miniseries uh, was, about 20 issues in because it was demanded. And fantastic. I was going to say, fantastic. that miniseries not only... Uh, was it? I mean, I mean, amazing, kind of giving his old backstory, uh, but dark, dark as hell, super dark. Really, I mean, it not could be a Vertigo book today. Yeah, not for the you know here kid. So, so DC, if you're listening, we need a, a trade of this release. Well, hopefully, 
hopefully it will tie in when they do the the trades because it he actually leads the series they deal they, with that they, they the deal with it. I mean his the, his appearances in the mini series then reflect directly into right. the book later they, they pretty much and, have to yeah that. if they skip it out you're gonna go you could read along but you'll go why did he go away being one way and he comes back and he's clearly his, got issues his daughter is kidnapped no it's actually his son or his son I'm sorry his well, son and, is and, and that actually brings up a good point because there was a more recent Deadshot miniseries by uh, Christos Gage. Right. Also excellent. Very good, but it has a very similar feeling to the first one. Is that one. the one where his daughter is? Daughter. Okay, okay. That's, that's, and that's exactly that's it. it. Right, but but right. the reason you would easily confuse it is it, it's beat for beat. It's very right. similar to the right, first right, one. Right, right. Yeah, so Deadshot. Fantastic character and, and definitely probably the, one of the bigger breakout stars. Of well, the and, and Go ahead. Oh, no. Uh, I was just going to say, I mean, that one of the things that makes the series so interesting is, um, I, I don't want to spoil it for people who hopefully go, oh, this is great. But later on, one of the plot lines that comes out of it is um, they're trying to get to the Middle East, and they miss their plane. Uh, Boomerang <laughs> and Deadshot oh, yeah. are in a bar drinking, and Boomerang has one too many, so they miss their plane. And so he goes, oh, and he drags him towards the bathroom. And he's like, oh, if you need to use the bathroom, you know, why didn't you just say so? And he throws Captain Boomerang into the stall. He goes, we missed our plane. He goes, yeah. He goes, well, guess what didn't miss our plane? And he thinks about it and he goes, our luggage? And he goes, exactly. And guess what's in my luggage? And that cool costume then is missing. And they have to find his equipment, essentially. And it, there's a whole ongoing plot line with that, which, I mean – you really couldn't get away with that in a Superman book where somebody else is running around in his tights or, you know, in, in a Batman book where it's uh, – well, I guess you could do it where somebody's got Batman's yeah, belt yeah, yeah, or something. Yeah. But it, it, it's kind of an interesting look and, and it kind People of – People steal a Batmobile all the time. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't that in the second, the second movie where Penguin had yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, Penguin yeah. has it and then so, some girl just stole it and – but in like the last few the, issues, the difference being whereas Batman continues to be Batman, Deadpool Deadshot literally suddenly starts viewing it as well. Somebody else is Deadshot, so I can't be that anymore. No. Well, he could always go back to the top hat. Uh, he basically does. <laughs> <laughs> now I just and want to talk about Captain Boomerang. He I keep bringing him up, but man, I love. I know you keep Boomerang. bringing him up because you're having a flash Get boner over there. Engaged, well, Cap- only- Captain Boomerang is is uh, my version of your speedball. Well, I was going to say, if, if, if Suicide Squad might be your favorite comic, Flash is probably second. Is this... Uh, yeah, I mean, just because... But, but the whole reason Captain Boomerang was in there was after going out of Legends. Right. They had decided, okay, now's the time to launch the new Flash book that had Wally West, right. which it had to have they, because of Crisis. And they ditched all, his, all and the And they rogues. said, we're not going to use any of the rogues. We want to, kind of like what they're doing with the new 52, where they said, we want to have new villains. We right. want to do something new. So they said, we're not using any of these guys. Right. So he was, you know, he was one of the rogues in the Flash, but he was considered kind of the joke of them. Yeah. I mean... Now, I mean, we can talk Captain Boomerang seriously, but for anyone listening... Yes, there's a character named Captain Boomerang. And yes, his costume is as ridiculous as his name. Yes, I mean he was basically a guy like an like a how to work bum who got uh, who was really good at a boomerang at throwing boomerangs. And so he got a job <laughs> at a boomerang like a toy boomerang company as like their spokesman and he's like I can make boomerangs and rob people with them. That works. Okay. And of course, he would tie the flash to him and boomerang flash out in the space and all sorts of ridiculousness. <laughs> and then they kind of take the ridiculousness of Captain Boomerang in the series and really play it up because he is hilarious. Well, they just play it. He spends his whole time. I mean, he's like, he's At a completely point, he's, irredeemable scumbag. And, and character. he's also, this is when he started becomes the Captain Boomerang that, that we know more recently. He's, he's fat, balding. He starts to lose. He starts to, you know, he's not the kind of typical villain. He's, he's getting on in age when this book starts up. But so. this book provides all that characterization for right, him. Because right. before, like you said, it was, he was, yeah, Random. I've got boomerangs and I'm going to fight the flash. Let's go. Right, 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 right. So, um, but you're right. He's a complete irredeemable scumbag. And he's and, great. And, right. Yeah. And, and they, they have, as part of the book, because these people are being forced to do it, one of the interesting characters is they have a, a 
psychologist who basically interviews them and then gives reports to Amanda Waller about, oh, you shouldn't use these people or this is their problem. And they continually talk about Captain Boomerang as basically being – he's the, the best adjusted of the group because he knows he's a jerk and <laughs> yeah. doesn't care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's fine with being a criminal. Like, is he like Steve Martin from The Jerk <laughs> but in a costume that throws boomerangs? <laughs> that would be good. The new phone books are here. Well, the he, new phone books are here. Yeah. He's just this like – this misogynist, like racist jerk. Yeah, like, the, he you know. well, he's, a, he's, a, he's a horny bastard with boomerangs. Yeah, and, and he's also arguably the only one who doesn't want to be there. I mean, right. he, he's offered the job of. Um, you know, do this and we'll give you your release. That's what he wants. I mean, he doesn't uh, want to be. On he the wants team. to be released. He wants to be but out then, of jail. as soon as he's released, he's right. Back he in. gets right back in. And they <laughs> bring him back. And, yeah, and yeah, yeah. I mean, there's some great stories with basically he thinks, oh yeah, I've been here and I'm senior, and they're like, no, we trust you less than any of the new people. <laughs> now, what about Count Vertigo? He's kind of a uh, well, interesting character. There, like you said, Rick Flag is in the series for the first. A good chunk of it. Yeah. And um, once they, you know, that's no longer the case. He sort of leaves the the book. But uh, Count Vertigo is sort of, w- the way I looked at it was this is sort of the replacement character for that spot in a way. Um, Who the hell is Count Vertigo? He's a Green Arrow villain. Yeah, he was Green Arrow's main villain for a while. Wasn't sort of like, I think a, this is the first time I've ever heard this guy's name. He's got kind of like a Magneto thing going, except instead of like magnets, it's like makes you dizzy. I I don't know. I, I couldn't tell you how he got his power. It's something <laughs> with like I think he had like an inner ear implant and then they put it in too good and so then he can force that on other people. Yeah, it's something really he, wacky. Yeah. But, he has some like kind of Doctor Doom complex yeah, too with yeah, like yeah, he's yeah, yeah. well in the book, I mean, again, he was just this guy fights Green Arrow, but in the book they come up with a reason of why he does what he does. Um and if not the first one of the first characters to be manic depressive <laughs> and they go into that and yeah. that's actually i mean frankly it's a very interesting spin on anybody because i mean i, I don't see again that you could do that to a mainstream <laughs> character and be like oh yeah um aquaman sometimes he's depressed and sometimes <laughs> he's really angry <laughs> So I mean, I guess going on. I mean, I mean, there's a couple other. I mean, Doctor Light, Enchantress, Night- Nightshade. Nemesis, Nightshade. Very I mean, important who, one. Who else is, is Nightshade? You want to? We got some. You want to? Well, Nightshade, talk Nightshade is, here a bit. She's Darkness Girl. Yeah. Basically, she and she's uh she joins the squad because the, she Amanda Waller has promised her that she would help her find her f- family. Which is they've disappeared under her some mother mysterious and, circumstances. Her mother and brother have disappeared. Her father is actually a senator, which that comes in later. Uh, yeah. Oh and, good uh, God, the geekingness here is awesome. And um, so she's on there. She's perhaps the most kind of heroic character on the team. Yeah. And uh, she's sort of the moral compass, if if there is one. There's such a thing on something called the Suicide Squad. <laughs> well, and, and she was again a tra- uh, Charlton character that was folded in during right. Crisis, and they're like, she's well, Silk nobody- Spectre, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> yeah, if you're familiar with Watchmen, I mean, they were basically they were based on these DC characters that DC didn't want to use at the time, so they're like, they were former Charlton characters that DC bought, and they're like, well, Alan Moore, sorry, we're going to use these characters post Crisis on Infinite Earth, so here, make new characters, and yeah, Silk Spectre. And there's, and you know, there, there's a few, there's a few points where um, the series just sort of employs some some surprising characters, given how lethal uh, their missions can be. I was going to say, besides all the characters that survived the series, it's probably also very important to talk about the characters that don't survive the series because there's the, a lot of those. There's a lot of those. Uh, and some some, and some fun. Uh, there's some some who could forget mind boggler. <laughs> There's a, there's a surprising amount of Firestorm I was, villains. I was just thinking the and same thing. And I'm a thing. huge Firestorm fan. And, man, Mul- they, multi- they just multi- want to throw... Multiplex. Multi- he's, multiplex. He's been in quite a lot of squad Plastique, stories. Plastique. Mindboggler. Well, Plastique um, died in the first... The Weasel. Arc. No. Oh, Mindboggler. Yeah. Mindboggler died in the first arc. Who was yeah. the chick that died? Mindboggler. Mindboggler. Her name was Mindboggler? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Plastique's in later... Yeah, pla- well, no, Plastique's actually in the first two issues as well, and she and she has a whole story, and then she comes back later as well. Oh, that's right, she does yeah. come back, huh? Um, she got shot. Oh, she comes a, back. Kill a Frost. No, mine yep. got shot. Oh, kill okay. a Frost. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of uh, yeah, just uh, they really were like, yeah, it's Firestorm book. Well, and uh, then later, John Ostrander 
also right. writing Both. Firestorm. Yeah. So, so there was a, there was a squad story in in that book as well. And that one, and that's when that book goes. Firestorm was kind of just this. I'm pretty sure that's when I mean the characters that were the Suicide Squad in, in their appearance in Firestorm w- that was entirely composed of Firestorm villains. Right. Well, that was where Multiplex and Killer Frost joined. Them. Well, and, and actually, you bring up a, a good point. Uh, the trades are fantastic, and they're they're you know they're good. They will give you the story, but already the the first trade is off because um, between issue four and five, they make uh, the Squad makes an appearance in Firestorm sixty four. And the annual from that year, which I think is number five. And um, it's actually – you can get by without reading it, but it comes into play later on because everybody's out to get Firestorm for their own reasons. And so the government's like, well, we need to get them. We'll send the Suicide Squad against them. Well, the Justice League shows up to do the same thing. And Blue Beetle, the Ted Cord Blue Beetle, your favorite. Of course. Notices – these guys working together and later on in issue 13 they're like yet yeah, i've seen them together before and so people start putting together that this might actually be something going on here which you know leads down the path of batman starting an investigation to look at at who these guys are and what's going on here well, and well, and those those aren't collected in the in the trade so i was going to say what's great about that run with firestorm too is that i mean he was basically just like a spider-man like character and when john ostrander takes over he becomes like tied in with Swamp Thing, he's an Earth. He's a, he's like the fire elemental. He goes totally fucking bonkers. And then when the Suicide Squad comes in, it's like, yeah, we're gonna take these ridiculous characters and it just we could just sacrifice them to the squad because we don't need them anymore. So, you know, a surprising character that was actually in quite a lot of issues of the Suicide Squad was Poison Ivy. Yeah, Poison Ivy was in like a, a large part of the the back half of the run. She shows up mid thirties and then yeah becomes one of the the key ones and this is again long before the Batman animated show which I would argue really kind of gave her the mainstream push that then got her into Batman Forever and then everybody kind of knew about her but up until then she was she was C list if not worse for a Batman character I mean yeah. if you were going to use a villain S uh, you would go Catwoman you would go somebody like that uh, she was just a uh, plant girl I yeah. mean yeah. who needed her. <laughs> Now, now, outside the awesome characters, I mean, one of the things about Suicide Squad was this wasn't just Superman punching Lex Luthor every issue. I mean, there was it was very political, very, very political, mm-hmm. lots of intrigue, very different than really any book. And I would say probably a precursor to a lot of titles you see today. It was very ahead of its time. Well, they basically start out fighting – the 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 super powered like DC universe equivalent of like Al Qaeda, right? It, it, yeah. more it, or less. It's exactly what it is. Is I mean, their, their first battle is against the Jihad, which <laughs> Jihad, <laughs> yeah, is the super powered terrorists, which they're going to basically unleash against America, and and the government finds out about it, and they're like, well, we can't have this happen. And uh, John Ostrander had said. Yeah, I mean, this may look familiar because I'm taking these ideas from the headlines. And throughout the series, there are a lot of things that hit very close to home. Yeah. Yeah, he he has commented in the past in interviews that he has friends who would tell him that, you know, before they plan their next vacation, they look to see what what he's writing about in Suicide Squad. And, you know, wherever they go, I'm not going there for vacation. Because, <laughs> like, it, you know, it's sort of like... Um, you know, real world reflecting right, fiction or right, whatever, right, right, you know. Art imitating life. Art Im- yeah, sure. that Well, like that you, wouldn't, quote. you wouldn't go take a hike in Iran. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Got cross border <laughs> looking for waterfalls. Now, now there's a very, uh, there's a lot of different variations in the Suicide Squad that we can talk about. Um, but before oh, we kind of, boy. I think, leave, well, I think before we leave the kind of this original classic run, there is one event specifically worth talking about. Oh. I believe Gage himself owns many pages of this original <laughs> I wouldn't say many, but I have a favorite a subplot in any You could almost make the original the original original comic. So so among this very sometimes very serious deadly comic, there is possibly the funniest <laughs> subplot that's existed in any comic. Now you now you you're not nearly far enough cuz the to yeah. slow the recent the trades Brock. No, it's okay. You will we won't spoil it, but we'll we'll get to it. Someone is throwing pies at people in the suicide squad. Was it Bell Reeve, right? Is where mm-hmm. they're Bell right, Reeve prison is where they're stationed off of. Someone is pieing people in the face. 
Does that even happen in the first trade? No, no it doesn't. It's... It doesn't show up until like issue twenty four. Yeah, oh, okay. So it's okay. not even in the first. And two this years. isn't something that's like one or two issues. This happens over a big chunk of the series, and actually kind of finds itself into massive plot points within the series. They did a really good job of having kind of ongoing subplots. And yeah. this was one, the first time you see it, you go, was that a mistake, panel? What is that? And, <laughs> and it just keeps happening. Right. And, it, and then you're like, okay, well, obviously it's happening. And it, and it happens to prominent people. Yeah. It's not only prominent people in the squad, it happens to prominent people in the DC universe. Oh, it, nice. it was like Identity Crisis uh, before Identity Crisis, where you're like, who, who is it? <laughs> oh, it's it's this person. I know it's this. No, no, it's not. So yeah, this this is a one of the. It, I think if if Justice League could be summed up with one punch, right? The classic, you know, it, like that's always the one thing a lot of people take away from from the uh, the Justice League run in the eighties and nineties. The international like, Justice League international, yeah. right? Where Superman one punching yeah that, Guy Gardner that's and awesome. knocking him on his ass. One of the it's funniest moments. This that the Pie Man in Suicide Squad is just to me outside. It's just total separate subplot, but it's than the main series. But it's just so funny that it just it, even the really serious parts you just know in the back of your head to be up. But there's someone pieing people in the face. Well, there's and it becomes like a whole plot within the book. They're like, we have to find out he's doing. They have this. a yeah. They have they conduct an investigation to figure out who and it is. I have my my list, my spreadsheet of Suicide Squad appearances. And the note, uh, first pie thrown, is uh, <laughs> is issue twenty one, and it goes on for over a year <laughs> before they uh, figure it out. Well, and, and going back to what you were saying with the Justice League International, what's really interesting is, like I said, with those covers where it was the flip of the book, that's really kind of a tone for the whole thing. Justice League International was this funny book where they would then have these exciting adventures, which kind of made those it's more serious. Poignant. Some serious, it had, stuff right? Too. It had sure. some serious sure. stuff, but but people think of it as a funny book. Right. The Suicide Squad was a serious book that occasionally had. These funny little subplots, and, and so they really had kind of the opposite tones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm looking outside. There's like smoke and an EMT, and a, I don't know what's going on. Well, they're not there. coming for us. Okay, I guess that's fine. Hopefully, this complex isn't burning down. Um, all right. Well, oh, moving on. Well, hopefully, we get out of this alive. Well, yeah, I don't yeah. really know too much. Keep going. I'm gonna go check it out. <laughs> all right. So, Bro- Brock will report back after his Suicide Squad mission to find out what's happening outside. So, uh, wait. I'm on a Suicide Squad mission. <laughs> Screw you guys. <laughs> Give him the bracelet. <laughs> yeah, they throw oh. these bracelets on people's arms. It's like if you if you I if totally you try to abandon the mission. There is. Yeah. Holy crap. Oh, well, apparently there's a fire out there. Okay, um, I'm going to attempt to pause this podcast for just one second, maybe edit this out, so um, hopefully you don't hear this. And uh, we're back after a quick little pause there. Brock, you had a mission outside. Yeah, what? I was out there with my suicide squad, but there was a car fire at the gas station. Yeah, that was a little exciting here. Yeah. They knew we were talking about some exciting comics, and they decided to start a car fire outside. Like, Yeah, I had to move my car. It was too close. That was a little scary there. Okay, well, I think we're going to... I think we're just going to continue talking about some Suicide Squad here and let the let the firemen and uh, cops do their thing out there. So we were uh, talking about the pie thrower. Yeah, yeah. Which was sweet. Pie thrower is pretty sweet. Yeah. And no um, pun intended. What else? No, what pies does he throw? Like whipped cream pies. I don't know. Whatever. Pecan they, pies. They make a sploot sound effect. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is where that came from. But yeah, I I don't remember what they are. I know they're not banana cream because somebody goes, oh, that's not my favorite. But other than that, I don't know what they are. No, okay. That's not a major plot issue. <laughs> They're just pies. They're just pies. <laughs> any other, any nope. other major, major parts of uh, Volume One worth talking? And you know, not try to spoil this stuff here for everyone because it's definitely a serious track. Well, um, uh, Sportsmaster dies, <laughs> and oh, Mister One Hundred Four dies. Oh, uh, I, I, I can't. You've ruined it. Mister One Hundred Four was um, my favorite. Who's Mister One Hundred Four? You know what? Exactly. You know what? Actually. <laughs> Hang on. There is one character who I believe well, has died as a member of the Suicide Squad like three separate times. It's Resurrection Man? Win. Bolt. Oh, well, there's that too. I thought you were also going to talk about – I mean, I-, I wonder if this is your favorite book because in uh, one issue they kill Grant Morrison. 
Oh, oh yeah. the writer. Wait, Grant yeah, Morrison right. dies. Grant yeah. Morrison dies because again, like we talked about the these Oh, Brock has not he just bought Animal Man Volume One. Okay. Yeah, don't so, ruin the okay. pen or the ultimate panel. We won't in then comic we won't books. we can't talk about it. But Grant Morrison dies in an issue. Yeah. And that's all we can say. But uh, but going back, they, they were not only a clearinghouse for characters nobody wanted to use, but they pick up the plot threads of all these other books that basically had gotten canceled. Shade the Changing Man oh, before he, he, he becomes, actually had a pretty big role in the book too. He he comes mm-hmm. back to the yeah. DC universe in that because I guess at the end of his Steve Ditko run he's like left in this negative universe yeah. and when they're doing a mission they end up finding him and bringing him back and he he hangs around for a while. Yeah. But these were all plot lines that they're like well nobody's doing with anything with this why don't you use it? Yeah. No, they've crossed over with Justice League International and who else? Firestorm. 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 Oh, and well, of course, we can't forget the big crossover, which was the, the Janus Directive. Right, where it, yep. it it's actually deceptive. It yeah. crosses over with Checkmate, which because Suicide Squad at the time was doing so well, they introduced Checkmate as another, hey, this is instead of superheroes doing spy work, this is spies doing spy work in a superhero world. Right. So these were all non-powered people. Which, which Greg Rucka later brought Checkmate back a handful of years ago. And then... You know, Disappear. one good turn <laughs> deserves another. I mean, after he brought the checkmate book back, he brought the Suicide Squad back in that book. Right, right, right. Yeah, that uh, that series it was it involved checkmate, uh, Captain Adam, Firestorm. and, and Manhunter, and Firestorm. Firestorm? Yeah. Oh, and Firestorm. Yeah. yeah. And, and the deceptive part is the Captain Adam. Even though he's a prominent player in the book, and like his book, whatever issue it was, gets labeled issue number 11 it's of like that one panel or the one first page. four pages are like and that was really tough work okay we'll see you around yeah. and that's the end yeah. so yeah. if you can't find that one that one it you know it says part 11 you're good you don't need that one <laughs> I think they ended shortly after – was it War of the Gods or was it a War of Gods crossover was the last issue? It was 58 and then they right have – but they, so. the, right after that, they have the – you know, they're wrapping up a storyline from Power of the Atom okay. where you know Superman and Aquaman and Batman all show up in the book. And I, I suspect that one was probably um, thrown in where they're like, we need big guns big to names. keep this yeah. going and, and it then happen. didn't work. Yeah. Yeah. They even had Batman on the squad a couple times. Yeah. Yeah. Amanda Waller kind of blackmails him into his place. Well, yeah. Batman and Amanda Waller have an interesting relationship um, through the Justice League title. I mean, she's she makes a few appearances here and there, and they really kind of, especially during that crossover, they sort of play Amanda Waller and Batman. Uh, they sort of butt heads as both very powerful, non controlling, sorry, controlling. Sorry. Uh, not physically Both powerful, stubborn but, people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's, it's a great, great little back and forth between those characters. He, Amanda Waller, you know, for her time, I mean, she she's like this overweight black woman, right? In a, in a comic book, bossing a bunch of supervillains around. Well, you know, what's which funny, is kind of even even the majority of the Suicide Squad. You know, a lot of people are looking at the new DC stuff and kind of being like, oh, they're really trying to branch out from not white male superheroes. And, and even the Suicide Squad had a very vast and, and varied both um, men and women and cultural diversity in, in the comic that you really... You almost didn't even see at that time uh, in, in the late 80s. Right. So, yeah, but, yeah especially yeah. with a with a overweight black woman being kind of the leader is not something you even see today. Right. So. They slimmed her up in the new book. Yeah. They made her sexy. The well, they made her look like the movie like version. But, yeah, they movieified yeah. her. Yeah. Let's like. rostify her by 10%. Yeah. Hey, yeah. she joined Weight Watchers, and man, <laughs> is she doing awesome. Well, you know, I actually kind of read a funny comment. Someone was like, while the original version was, was very unique and very interesting, shouldn't we be happy for this character if they lost weight? Like, like almost kind of like, wouldn't you be happy if this if this was a real person and they lost all this weight. Like, I, I, I get that it's kind of like you, you don't really need to look at it that way, but it was kind of like, well, but I, I mean, well, of course, we're, we're looking at it. We're looking at it like, oh, they made her sexier looking because, because, because they it's, can. Yeah, yeah. You know, I just it was designed a, by committee or whatever. Yeah, I seriously think if she went know. to Weight Watchers, just, lost all the weight, did it, you know, yeah. took some her time to yeah. focus on her. I just thought it was a funny You know, comment. she sit there, watch Oprah clips. It's, you know, I think it's great. <laughs> Now the squad, after this this kind of run that that we're all all big fans of here, um, and Brock will will be a 
fan of yeah, I'm already when a the fan trades of it. are done. I'm already a fan of it. Um, the squad did come back a handful of times uh, well, b- before we came back to recording after that car fire. Uh, we were talking about the relaunch of the title they did in late 90s, early 2000s. 2001. It was 2001? Okay. Yeah. Which was uh, Keith Giffen, correct? Right. And Of Justice League International who, who, fame. Yes. And then oh. who was on art? Paco Medina, who oh. now is doing X Men. So yeah. again, I yeah. mean, you yeah. see people who turn up again and again. Yeah, yeah. and that run, that run was a little, little not, weird. Not everyone's favorite. Well, it lasted. It only lasted a year. It went twelve issues, yeah. and um, it was a pretty different kind of squad. That was, um, it was led by Sergeant Frank Rock, and uh, his his sidekick Bulldozer. Which I don't know. I think that character was in, created I, for this book. No. I, I mean, I didn't read a lot of Frank Rock, but I, he, they implied he was the heavy machine gunner, so I don't know if that was a real character from Frank no- okay. Rock or not. Okay, yeah, I have no idea Sergeant either. Rock. But, um, so, he, so the two of them put together this new Suicide Squad, um, Task Force Omega, that initially consists of the um, sort of D-list supervillains that Keith Giffen once used to form Justice League Antarctica, <sighs> which was sort of like a one-shot throw a joke. Yeah. Book. And uh, those characters are um, Major Disaster, Clue Master, Multi Man, Clock King, and what are you taking a test? And, and Big Big Sir. <laughs> so those are the five. Clock King, man. Clock King, <clears throat> awesome. Cla- original Clock King, not yep. animated series Clock King. Yep. Big Sir, classic quote unquote Flash villain. <laughs> uh, I use that term very loosely. Uh, who else? Who else was on that? Mult- I don't. What did Multi Man? I don't. Multi Man was uh, Challengers of the Unknown oh, okay. bad guy. Okay. And uh, he actually, you were talking about it. Uh, what two weeks ago? Last week, the Resurrection Man. Uh, yeah. He was. Yeah. He's the villain version of Resurrection. Man, he comes back with a different power, ah. and I don't remember is it every time he dies or every time he wakes up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they all die horribly. <laughs> well, mostly, that's like the launch mostly. of the book, right? Well, yeah. and they actually retcon some of it because uh, other people who were died show up again. Clue Master comes yeah. back. Yeah, and uh, so this this new squad, Major Disaster, is kind of the the Rick Flag. I yeah. suppose of the team, they bring Deadshot back, and they bring Killer Frost in. But um, kind of by that time, I think I think after a few issues, they knew, eh, and we're lucky to get a year's worth of stories. Yeah, I mean, and, and again, they they did some interesting things. Like they had some fill-in issues where they had uh, Kaniger and uh, I think it was Ross do some of the art. So like going all the way back to to one of the previous ones to yeah. like be like, oh look, here here are some classic teams to see yeah. if that would get people interested. And then I want to say like the JSA appears in the last two yeah. issues to again see if they can get some interest in. Yeah, just yeah. there's a whole there's a whole. Um, Continuing the the um, pastries theme, there's a whole issue about a cake. <laughs> a Birthday cake, cake plays a, yes. a large role in this one issue. I don't even remember that. I, yeah. I I read the the second series like when it was coming out, and yeah. I just I was like, uh, I think that's probably about right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they kind of they kind of have these two new characters who are sort of poor man stand-ins for Oracle and I guess Amanda Waller. Um, that I don't know. It didn't. It, just didn't have like the magic of the yeah. the original sort of. Um, there's nothing wrong with it, but there's nothing spectacularly yeah. right about it either. Yeah. But but then they kind of do bring the original back. I mean, there is there well, was a, the a original, mini series that came out a handful the, of years ago. The original squad kept and Amanda Waller kept making appearance. You know, off appearances in other books. There was a, there was a three issue Superboy arc, there which was, is fantastic. I mean, were, that's really good. Yes, and Chase. Chase. A, a good turn in Chase. And I really like the Superman. We were talking about this earlier before we recorded. The Superman, um, sp- uh, the the special, it was a t- 2004 one by Jeff Johns. The this sec- is a real early Jeff Johns. The work Secret for DC. Files. Yeah, yeah, and I remember reading that and being like, holy crap, because they, they bust Amanda Waller out of jail? Is that? She's in jail, and the squad or members from the squad bust into jail to kill her. Oh, to kill her. That's what yep. it is. Okay. And, and that was uh, – I remember kind of like, oh, they're bringing the squad back. And, and John said he had been writing uh, – I mean he had – he 
That he was this was pre Infinite Crisis, but he had, he had still, done he had, his, he had been on Flash for a little for, Flash, for and he had done and he had done his JSA stuff, and, yes, and kind of in still, there. And the reason Amanda Waller was in jail was when they did the President Luthor thing. Oh, she, she was, on was there. one of his advisors, right, and so right, when right. he went down, she, she ended up down. in jail. Right, right. Kind of tying that all back together. Well, to the, where does the the I'm looking at from the ashes fit in? That was the miniseries I was that, talking about. Two thousand seven years later. Mm-hmm. 2000 let's see <laughs> 2000 it was it was um after after 52 oh, 07, 08. and um that was it, on i think the official name of that series suicide squad raised the flag they, i think they started from the ashes and then they changed it a couple issues and the, and the title of the trade is from, from the, the ashes, ashes yeah. but collectively the story is generally referred to as raise the flag which they, you know, they show sort of Rick Flagg's return to the squad, which I, I won't spoil. But um, it's sort of a very classic. No, no, actually, Rick Flagg had pretty much he has not been in the DC continuity a lot prior to that. He'd been gone for. A well, he had been gone from since basically since since, since they he right. exited from the original ninety one or something. Uh, n- or he he right he disappeared and then. Referencing the Greg Rucka Chuck uh, checkmate, mm-hmm. he showed up for two issues of that. Okay, and it was you could argue it's a precursor to sure. the, the squad. I mean, they, they, they show again how where he came from and actually how he got there. Right, right. that is that it, itself a Suicide Squad story, which is a great one. It's yep. like six and seven of the checkmate, and uh, yeah, that's another good read yeah, and, if you can find it. And then uh, raise the flag was. In two thousand seven is when it started. It was eight issues, and again written by John Ostrander, and it's it's a very sort of in the vein of the classic Squad series. I mean, there's yeah. even flashbacks where you see Captain Boomerang and, yeah, yeah. and all that. They work everybody in, and I I just reread it because I'm like, oh, I haven't read this since it came out, so I reread it in the trade. They got nightshade old costume. They they stuff. have everybody who kind of they could use, they bring back, and if they couldn't use them, they reference where they've gone and stuff like that. And it's interesting. I didn't pick up on, or if I did pick up on it the first time reading it, I didn't realize it until later. But something didn't sit right with me when I read it the first time. They're they have a mission that goes through the book that that's their focus, but they talk about well, we have another mission as well, and I. That never was resolved in the mini, and hmm. so it left you. Like I said, it left this feeling of, well, wait, what was that other mission they were talking <laughs> about? The other mission turns out to be Salvation Run. Oh, and that makes sense. It, it, I, I don't know if it was going on at the same time or if it happened right after. It, it was right after. Wait a second. Wait a second. Hold on. Because Salvation Hold Run. While well, Ryan looks up here, Salvation One second. Run. I, was, I, I have the official word from Wikipedia, which is <laughs> <laughs> so basically from you. From you. <laughs> The series takes place roughly between the squad appearance in Checkmate, Volume 2, Number 6 to 7, and the events of Salvation Run, as Amanda Waller has already been ousted from her position at Checkmate, but Deadshot is still with the squad and not exiled, so, which is so, part of what happens in Salvation Run. So in Salvation Run, which had its detractors, but overall I actually thought it was a fairly enjoyable miniseries. Well, it started off in Countdown. Right. We see, I mean, it we started really, really good, but it, it ended really, really bad. Well, when well, I re- well, like, well the plot of me. this was, they're like, yeah, all these supervillains running around, yeah, Suicide Squad, you're going to go get them and drop them off on another planet and kick them out of our universe. We can't deal with them anymore. Get every supervillain off Earth. And while that seems really cool... I think that's neat. it needs more than like a six issue miniseries. Like this could have been like a, an event book by itself, and maybe maybe should have been, or, or maybe it was going to be. But I just don't feel like like I enjoyed it. But they didn't do enough with it. Well, uh, yeah, there was that one tie-in where in the Justice League that yeah, well, like yeah, Meltzer was writing it at yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah. Like a handful of villains are like, oh, hide us hide, from the yeah. Suicide Squad because yeah. they're trying to round us up. Yeah. But you're right. Not only could they have done that, they you know in the book the whole premise is they're rounding up the villains and they're gone. I mean, to really make it hit home, they should have then had to write all the books in the DCU without any <laughs> With of the no costume. villains. Well, no costume villains. They oh, would okay. have had to do, you know, natural disasters. Yeah, or, yeah, 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 something else. But it just seemed like again a, a cool idea that just didn't follow through. But I mean, the squad is a major appearance of that. And actually, um, you know, uh, a book I, I really enjoyed, which is, uh, we mentioned earlier, was Identity Crisis. Even though the squad it is not the big bad, but they are they are they're very, very they're, they're they have pivotal. They're, they're very important, uh, especially Dr. Light 
and a lot of the characters and sort of Batman. Well, Captain Boomerang. And Captain Boomerang. And Deadshot. Is, and, I mean, yeah. that's where you got the first action figure of Deadshot was coming out of those. those uh, <laughs> From the terrible well, Michael Well, I mean, Turner when we were all, I remember exactly. we were all like, who did it? Who's the murderer? And I mean, the Suicide Squad was, they were on the list. Yeah, right? I mean, Batman even was like, you know, this, you know, he was kind of talking in the book like, you know, oh, I got to look at the Suicide Squad. Like, you know, this is, this just sounds like something they would do. And they're brought You know what? That might have been the book actually that made me go like, these guys sound cool. I think it might have been Identity Crisis. Well, and I remember I think when it. Identity Crisis was coming out, that was a book. I, I mean, <sighs> I remember really being really jazzed for it, but I remember, Ryan, you being really jazzed for it and being like, you need to read this right now. Don't talk to anybody. Yeah. Just go read this. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah, remember yeah. at least one time coming in, going out, sitting in my sitting car, car, reading yeah. it, and then coming back in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ryan was like the internet's chief conspiracy theorist about that book. <laughs> we, were, we would like... Jason ha- Todd and Alfred's body. Oh, God. <laughs> but, uh, don't even get started on that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, the, the squad was in that book. Yeah, <laughs> pretty, pretty. Identity Crisis is almost heavily. a book, you, almost an episode by itself. Yeah. It is an episode yeah. by itself. Because <laughs> I, when I read it, just picking up from what you recommended, I mean, it was a phenomenal read. Yeah. Outside of any continuity, knowing any continuity, yeah. I mean, yeah. it was a fantastic read, at least from my point of view. Because at that point in time, I'm like half these characters I don't even know, but yeah. it's like I'm still engaged in the story, and it was yeah. really, really yeah. good. Nate turns elongated man into your favorite character ever. Heck yeah. Um, so, let's see. There was Salvation Run and Raise the Flag. And then there was uh, a Blackest Night arc that, that mm-hmm. they they participated in. Well, and Blackest Night, the, and do you want to talk Secret Six? Have you read enough Secret Six? Because while oh, not... Dear. I can't believe that... As big a fan as you are, you haven't read Secret Six because Gail Simone really takes a lot of what they have. I mean, it's basically and, the Suicide Squad. And John Ostrander and wrote a, co-wrote a few issues, right? Well, and there's, right. I think it's issue 15 where it's like a focus on Deadshot, and they actually bring back uh, a, a side character that the uh, uh, not the well the priest from the prison bumps into Deadshot, and he basically takes his confession in a diner, and no. they. T- yeah, no, well, I was going to say, well, now, while Suicide, or Secret Six is, is a different title, it has a lot of the same characters mm-hmm. and very much the same feel, even to the degree of, of when they launched this new um, Suicide Squad comic. I, I'm giving it to everyone that's getting, that got the Secret Six title, has, again, some of the same characters, very similar feel to it. You know, not exactly the same, but I, I think if you like Secret Six, you would like the Suicide Squad. It's really worth going back. And if you like Suicide Squad, definitely check out Secret Six. Right. Very similar. So, Well, the, the Blackest Night arc involves two um, issues of Secret Six mm-hmm. and then Suicide Squad number 67, which right. was part of their – they took like eight or ten comics or something and sort of did a one-off. You know, they did the question number 37. Right, and Starman. All these – Dead books got one more issue since right. all these characters right. were coming back. And they, they – um, you know – Tons of dead characters were shown up in the DC universe, as you know, recruited and resurrected as part of the Black Lantern Corps, and uh, there was a, a selection of dead former Suicide Squad members that they the um, unofficially became known as the Homicide Squad, and uh, so you had characters. Well, maybe I shouldn't really yeah, you say can't really who give, cause, cause it gets there's some spoilers, but um, so there's these you know the 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 se- it's the Secret Six and the Suicide Squad, the Living Suicide Squad. Versus all these dead Suicide Squad characters. Yeah, very fun issue. Yeah, and that was cool. Yeah, and that's that's <laughs> all collected in in one of the Secret Six trades. If you want to just pick that those stories up, it not only has that one shot uh, dead shot issue, but it has that one. So you could, you know, if you wanted to pick and choose, you could just pick that up. No, and man, I feel like I'm gonna have to put together a reading list. <laughs> Just ask Gage. He'll just tell you. Gage, can you just email me? Yeah, I'll send you it. Save the save it so you can put it up on uh, yeah. Insider Brock. Conspiratorbrock.blogspot.com. Yeah. No, I mean there have been a couple of appearances here and there mentions, um, but you know we've just got a new. The whole reason I wanted to this, do this episode now was because we, last week we had the launch of the new Suicide Squad book. While it's part of the New Fifty Two and this different quote unquote universe, um, I think all four of us have read it, Brock. Oh yeah, it read it, loved it. Um, I, I, no spoilers. No, no, no spoilers. We'll keep this pretty spoiler free. But I think the general consensus is, if you liked Suicide Squad, you will probably like this. While again, like Secret Six, a little bit different. Um, Gage, I know you had a couple. You may not want to talk about it. I, I liked it, it. It was in the top of the first two weeks. It was in the top four books yeah. that 
uh, have come out. Like I, I enjoyed it, and and it very much going back all the way to what we were talking about with Thunderbolts. It, it and maybe you can talk to this, uh, Ryan uh, Scott, but. Um, it feels like after the Thunderbolts run uh, in the dark rain where it was uh, Warren Ellis and then Andy Diggle, it feels like it's taken that sort of influence and brought it into the to the Suicide Squad. Wait, Suicide Squad's been mar- marvel <laughs> Yes, marvel I, I haven't read. Marvel, oh, you so would like I, those. I have no context for that. Okay, you would like those because it has that kind of feel. But it, it definitely is – a Suicide Squad done after we've had movies like The Bourne Identity. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and so it has much more of a gritty, it, current it, day feel. It's, it's very dark and it's very – I think they're going to take this book into a lot more you don't know what's going to happen at the turn of the page because what you think is going to happen isn't going to happen. So it's going to be like very – I'm undercover, but I'm really undercover, and I'm undercover here. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I just want to see somebody throw some pies. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that they'll be able to bring that back. But we'll I don't think there's any pies in the new Fifty Two. But... If, if they make it just incredibly dark, and all of a sudden you just see somebody get hit in the face with a pie, that'd be the best thing ever. <laughs> Well, I would I mean, support that. They, they released the Dem- December solicits, so I mean, they, they, you never know. They are bringing with the December solicits that came out today. Um, I mean, yeah. should I? Not a spoiler. Yeah, it, on the cover, yeah. Captain Boomerang, who wasn't Covers part a of this at least issue one, shows up in issue four. So they are. You never know. They may bring people it's, back. It, it's unclear what the continuity of the squad is uh, going into this book. It feels like it's sort of new, but it. Also, you get some reference that that these characters have met before, or at it, least a few it, of them have. It's the same feeling that you got from Justice League number one, where right. we're introduced to only four characters, and only three of them actually interact yeah. in the book. Yeah. In this, it's very contained in in the Suicide Squad. We don't really get the outside world in this, well, and well, I think then in we this, do. Right, in this, I think you kind of get the... The motivation, the characters, mm. not and, and but not their relationship to anything else, and not the squad's relationship to the to the world. Well, universe it, it's, in it's kind of like a, a very dark and violent introduction to each person. Right, exactly, exactly. So not, not the concept of the book so much as the characters. Mm. So, but I have a funny thing with this one is that I found the two appearances of the hooded woman <laughs> in the. You, there's two. You love that. That I love that. Hood, it's just, this. It's, what? There's two appearances of the hooded Brian woman. Know who the hooded woman. In, she's appearing in every first issue, but in Suicide Squad she appears twice. And Bleeding Cool had her first appearance, but they didn't have her second. So I submitted a tip, and my picture ended up on Bleeding Cool. So because she appears in a really small, it's a cool huh. Easter egg that they're running through all the books. Of yeah. This woman who showed up in the last issue of Flashpoint, and then she's showing up everywhere. So maybe if I read comics, I would understand. <laughs> and maybe this is how they're trying to get you to do that. Find the woman. The, what they should do is start having appearances of the, su- the Suicide Squad in every in book. every comic. And then I will. Then I'll get them. Now, the squad, besides appearing in all these comics, um, has appeared in, in actually both Justice League Unlimited and Smallville. Uh, except for Brock, I don't know, because neither of you have really watched Smallville, Ryan and, and I Dave. saw the episode with the icicle okay. where Amanda Waller says it at the end, but was there an actual all, episode where they had more than just one person? All I know is what I wrote on Wikipedia. Yeah, I, I mean, they <laughs> sort of appear multiple times, but it's not like... There's never the team is never there. Well, the team is there briefly, and much like you'd expect, they go down pretty quick. Um, <laughs> so uh, basically, what you're saying is, what season of Smallville do I need to pick up? Nine, eight, I think eight. ten, eight. No, no, season ten. It's season ten because no. I haven't seen it. This, oh, there's a season nine episode. No, because they they fight Doomsday as well. Yeah. Hold on. <clears throat> Am I totally misremembering? I'm like Hold 90% on. positive. They According to Wikipedia, <laughs> in Smallville's Season 9 episode, Absolute Justice, the Suicide Squad is referenced directly by Checkmate's Amanda Waller at the end of the episode, something, something, Icicle, <laughs> which you can probably guess who, um, yeah, the end of the episode also reveals that something, something is, is a Checkmate agent. Is and then the not? Suicide Squad itself is featured in Smallville's 10th and final season. Yeah, because I haven't seen the actual team, because I haven't but seen the 10th season. And, and the members include Rick Flagg, De- Deadshot, Plastique, and Warp. But there was a group that fought there was a There was a Doomsday. group in, in season 8, and that, w- which is where Amanda Waller references the Suicide Squad at the end of the episode. So, so in, in summary, 
they've been on Sh- on on Smallville. Yeah, they've been on Smallville. And, <laughs> what's funny is, is I think I think it's kind of the a funny introduction. I, I think the first the, what you're talking about where they fight Doomsday is yeah. kind of like a trial, like a trial. run. Okay, and yeah, then yeah, the yeah, then the that. the appearance that I haven't seen because I haven't seen yeah. season ten yeah, yeah, yeah. is the actual the yeah. because that I mean the name drop at the end with that Amanda Waller I was even like ooh yeah. now now. I'm not going to say Smallville's a great show, but I, I do enjoy it. But what is a great show is Justice League Unlimited, and arguably the best Oh, not arguably. It is the single best episode of the series. <laughs> arguably. Whether you're best. a Suicide Squad fan or not, seriously, wait, that wait, it was it, just it, a is cool this, Is episode. this a paintball episode? No. Oh, wrong show. The, it's, wrong show. It's, the episode is called Task Force X. And, and it is and it's totally the Suicide Squad on Justice League Unlimited. But... Uh, from I, their point of view, yeah, and, I mean they're the main, they're the protagonists of the episode. But correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think they actually use the word Suicide Squad. They don't. No, they they always call it Task Force. Right, because I, yeah. I don't think you could slip that no. by no. in a kids' cartoon. No. Yeah, no, because that'd be like the Birds of Prey episode with and, the uh, and while scenes. It's, right. And, and while it's not clear, there's probably a fatality in it. Yeah, it, it is would, not. You do not. Uh, see, I am in no spoilers, but you, the person is still alive when you see them writhing in pain. But yes, badly injured. But it is un- <laughs> unlike. I don't think that character. Not, not everybody ever. comes back. We'll leave it that. Yeah, I don't yeah, think yeah. every care in, that character is ever seen again in DC animated the, continuity. The only episode, and again, it's funny because you're looking at it from a villain's perspective. The only episode I think that can rival that is the one where Flash and Lex Luthor trade the, bodies, which uh, was hilarious. Which right. again, you're seeing a large portion of the episode from the villain's perspective. But again, it's, it's seeing the squad go up against like Martian Manhunter. Like, what a fantastic! You know, they're totally outpowered yet they're still able to do it. You know, like there's some fantastic scenes in there. No, are these out on DVD yet? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. they're mm-hmm. all on DVD and Blu-ray and stuff. Yeah. And, yeah. and that squad, you know, it's Rick Flag, Deadshot, Captain Boomerang, Plastique, yeah. and standing in for Oracle is the DC animated version of Clock King. Right. Which I, I thought was pretty cool. One of your favorite cool. characters. Or perhaps I should say standing, well, standing for Oracle or Calculator, I right. guess. All right. Um Yeah. So yeah. that was that was kind of a neat way to bring him back because yeah. he was always one of my favorites from Batman the Animated Series. Yeah. Well, and actually, that brings up a really good point because uh, in listening to your other show, The Geek Box, you have pointed out who you would want to be if they ever did a movie of this, who you would want to be. And I would argue – Oh, dear. Who oh, wait. Are we, are we doing a cons- con- the comic conspiracy the, the casting pick call like here? The casting call like Wizard Magazine used to do? <laughs> right. But you at one point had said that you wanted uh, your man crush uh, – What's his face from uh, Nathan Fillion? Exactly, Nathan to, Fillion to, to be Rick Flag, and I would argue that um, Adam Baldwin, who is the voice in the cartoon, should be Rick Flag. No, nah, that's that. You know what? I think I said he, he should be Deadshot, though. You did, but I would argue that you should get uh, from Deadwood. Uh, Timothy Oliphant oh. with a big yeah, porno mustache. Be, oh, yeah. Right. He would be good as Deadshot. <laughs> and then, actually, if I were going to cast Boomerang, I, would, I, I stand by my pick, which is Jason Statham. That would be pretty good. But For I, Boomerang? But if, if yes. you were going to, you know, because obviously they're going young with everything, I would go with, um, I don't know the actor's name, but the brother on uh, True Blood. Who, who? Um, I don't know. Okay, if nobody watches, but he's, my wife watches that. I'll ask I, her. But uh, he's <laughs> he has this accent where he's from the south, but it turns out he's actually Australian. So when you hear him talk, you're like, oh, that guy could totally do it. <laughs> but but the point I'm making is because he can do the accent. See, Jason Statham's British, I believe. That sounds right. Yeah. But whatever. Same same thing. Basically, not American. They yeah. would they would not be happy with that <laughs> generalization. But yeah. But um, what I was going to say is that actor does like an American accent very well. And if you were going to throw in one of the plot lines early on, where uh, Boomerang moonlights and basically tries not to be Boomerang for a couple of issues, mm. you could throw that in. <laughs> hmm. So. So that, that's the Suicide Squad. Uh, was there? Did we miss anything? There were talk. There were talks of a movie at one time. Yeah. There's that video game movie, that uh, video game that supposedly still coming. Yeah. 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 We'll see. Deadshot's going to be in Batman: Arkham City. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He oh, looks, looks really very good. cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. It reminds me. I gotta go pre-order my copy. Yeah. Me too. Um. And so far, there's two trade paperbacks out. Um. There's a third coming. There's there's Tribal Fire, which is the 
first, the first arc. yeah, and then they're coming out with a volume two for that, right? Right, correct. Right. And that is Bunch called the said. Nightshade Odyssey. Nightshade Odyssey, okay. And, but uh, one of the things that's interesting, at least in, in the solicit, <clears throat> is that the numbering is wrong. I mean, because the first trade only gets to like issue seven, hmm. yeah. And this one shows like it starts at nine, so I don't know if they're skipping eight. Hmm. Well, so it really also mean, been that, that they they got the numbering wrong. According to Wikipedia. <laughs> Oh, jeez. <laughs> volume 1 is issues 1 through 6 and Secret Origins, yeah. number 14. And Volume 2 is no, issues 7 through 12 and Justice League International, number 13. Okay, then they corrected it from the early solicits, which had it. it, it there was a gap in there, and so you wonder. Because sometimes when they do, I mean, you've talked about this before on other books. Sometimes when they collect stuff, they go, well, this isn't really important. We need to save money in this. Yeah. Day. Man, No. I don't like that. Not when it comes to the school. Well, See, that's why you just got to make your, you know, bind your own like I do with Booster Gold. Man, that thing rules. Yeah. I'm about like six issues in. Oh, and, and the, the, the third trade is the um, the miniseries from, from a few years ago. It was a race of flight. No. Ra- it? Well, it's called Suicide Squad from the Ashes. From the Ashes. It is that. Uh, Gage, just email me a list I can yeah. put yeah. up. Well, please. I'm surprised you've never read it because in the first series, Katana shows up for about four or five issues. And, yeah, uh, I, I are you a Katana fan? He's an outsiders, outsiders fan. Oh, okay. and then in, in the miniseries, uh, Windfall is a part of the team. Yeah, see, I, I think that was that came out in early two thousands. The miniseries was two thousand seven. So. Yeah, see, I hadn't gotten back into comics yet, so a lot of that stuff is like I'm playing catch up on a lot of things. <laughs> but it's nice that like they've done the Justice League International trades that you can you know i can go back instead of trying to find single issues and now they're doing suicide squad well and and this has been demanded by the fans i mean the reason they're doing these was they tried to put out um the essential volume a couple of times showcase. yeah it would get oh the showcase sorry so, you're right yeah. wrong wrong uh wrong wrong company. Brand. you can't get more they, credit they, on this podcast they, talking about? <laughs> they axed it a couple of times and people got really worried and like the second or third time they asked it, they said, no, we're going to go back and we're actually going to do these in color. The only problem being with it being 66 issues and them doing somewhere in the neighborhood of six each time, you're looking at 11 trades. I mean, that's going to take you. Plus crossovers. Plus. Yeah, that's, that's all right. Hopefully but, they'll get through it. That, that's, but that's five years of waiting for books. Yeah. You waited 20. I suppose that there's that. Waited so. 25. You know, so. I, I was pleasantly surprised that they actually got through all the question trades. Yeah. They got those through this pretty quick, but yeah. they didn't do the um, the quarterly, no. and they didn't do question returns. Right, well, that, could have, that could have been a yeah. that could have been a seventh volume. Bind yeah. your own man. <laughs> and then they out of print. So anyone yeah. hearing this going, "Ooh, I'm going to get the question." Yeah. Good luck finding it on eBay. But if you can, that's another good book. Well, I think we're we're close to wrapping this up, but we got one last little little thing here, which, which we don't really have uh, kind of everything figured out but we'll, we'll get this figured out in the next week or so uh gage who is again a, a a master fan with his multiple multiple runs of suicide squad has donated to the podcast a near complete run of of the suicide squad for us to do what we will yeah i don't know if you want to have the geek box members all sign it you guys could do something like that but um yeah i was actually like brock uh, uh, listening to you and your binding success with uh, booster gold i'm like oh i'm gonna do that and now that they're doing the trades i may still do that because i'd like to have you know a nice set that i could have on on the shelves but i was like well you know here we are we're going to be talking about this book and then we're like oh good luck finding your own (laughs) copies out there somewhere but you'll you know have to search so i was like well i'll bring them in let you guys figure out what you want to do yeah so I mean, this is the full run plus the majority of the appearances, kind of it, it's throughout. The, it's the full first run, so you get the uh, secret origins, secret origins, and then you get all sixty six plus those two specials we talked about. It's got all the crossovers from uh, the Janus Directive. Plus, for you, I threw in Firestorm sixty four, nice. Annual five. For you, not connected to the series, but I threw in um, the appearances in the. 90s outsiders yeah that really bad one that just needs to die (laughs) but i still have to read it (laughs) it's got its moments and they fight the jihad so there's a first appearance of something where they're like hey these were cool bad guys we'll throw them back in and then um there's some copies of the superboy crossover and and things like that and then oh there is the complete eight issues of the ostrander return from the mini um and they're fairly nice copies issue 52 which i would argue was the 
weakest of the first run. Uh, for some reason, the copy I found, uh, somebody had pulled out all the ads. So <laughs> it, it's not, I would not say this is a mint collection, but they're nicer than reader this copies. This is a reading collection. Yeah. It, well, it, but some of them, some of them are very nice. So, yeah. you know, don't be going, ooh, I'm going to get that and, and man, I'm going to slab them in these. Yeah, we'll be watching out. eBay for, if we, <laughs> if we end up getting this out, we'll watch eBay for people trying to sell this thing. So, I think uh, next week we'll, we'll try to, Gage kind of dropped this on us, so we'll we'll try to figure something out for next we'll week. To, we'll have to do a quiz. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll figure out we'll some sort do of a writing contest. Yeah, yeah, some sort of. I can think of a good quiz that <sighs> nobody would be able to. Except well, only people who already own it or, would be able to. Or you're always looking for uh, good reviews on iTunes. You can oh, always do something oh. the best review on iTunes. Hey. Yeah. Someone said do. that we didn't like. Marvel enough, so they gave us kind of like a bad review. So maybe if we get some good that's iTunes reviews, that's because Marvel sucks. Uh, no, Marvel's I want good. to believe. I want to believe. <laughs> Marvel has some good stuff. Marvel does have some good stuff. I think that would be a good good contest. People should write uh, reviews of the con conspiracy on iTunes. I unless we come up with something better, I say let's just do that. I, yeah. I guess if that screw it, we're not going to next week. It's and best I, review on iTunes. Right, right. Okay. But like a real, you know, a real review, not just like oh, I want Suicide Squad, yeah, you know, yeah, right? Yeah. Like a good. Do, we, do we need a word count here? No, well, no. I mean, whatever. <laughs> what, what if they have like two sentences that you're like, those are the best two sentences yeah. ever? ever. Right. Okay, this works. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll let it run for a few weeks, and uh, you know, <clears throat> five stars only. Um, but you know, we'll uh, you know four and a half and below, we, we disqualify you automatically. But um, you know, nah, just joking. Even if you say you hate us and you have the best review for why you hate us, I mean, we'll take that too, I guess. Um, Man, you're just asking for it. Well, yeah. No, okay, yeah, that that's awesome. Actually, yeah, we'll do that. We'll we'll let this run for a few weeks, and uh, we'll we'll pick some winners. So, so we're going Sweet. to so we're actually going to change up the random pick this week. It's going to be your random pick for Suicide Squad. So you can pick. You guys will probably pick single issues. I'm going to stick with what I know, which is I'm recommending Trial by Fire, Volume One. I, I'm, I'm going to totally cheat and say the Justice League Unlimited episode because I'm, because for my money, how is it a random comic pick? It's a well, comic episode. It really, it, it, it is. It distills it down into like a good twenty minute. Like this is everything you need to know about it. And if you like this episode, you know more people are willing to try. So to for all you people show. hosting that ish, uh, episode that, illegally, that man, that torrent is going to go skyrocketing high by like two more well, and, hits. Would it be on iTunes? You could probably download it. Probably. Yeah. And then I'm it's sure on the second collection of the, the you know, I'm sure CD. Amazon yeah. has got it I think on. at this point it's like 20 bucks. Amazon's the probably got season. it on their thing and stuff like that. So I mean, highly, highly recommend that episode just to get limited. So what, do I need to pick like one issue? Random issue. Uh, story. Moment. Story Some moment. Well, I'll tell you what my favorite, one of my favorite Suicide Squad moments is, which I, I don't, know the issue number. It's somewhere in the front G half of the round. Gage will tell you. You'll, you'll yeah. know. Gage will tell us. But it is, it is the Not episode... <laughs> or, I'm sorry, the issue with Senator Cray. Oh, issue four. Oh, no. Oh, Senator Cray. So you're, you're looking... Because it's actually the subplot later on. So probably 22 is the, the culmination of it. And uh, th I like this, but you know, Ryan. Be, um, Rick Flagg, who is not in the best... Um, mental health during the course of this issue sets off to kill oh this yes. this senator who um yes the the act of doing this would basically expose the squad right uh, uh, oh brock and, and uh gager and, are digging uh, through the stack of comics here we're gonna and, give away and amanda waller freaks out and she sends Deadshot after him telling him don't let Rick Flagg kill Senator Cray. She sends the entire squad after yeah. him. Well, I mean those are specifically the instructions. Right. Yeah. She sends the entire squad and she's like don't let uh, Rick Flagg kill Senator Cray. And some of them are like oh, why are we doing this? And they're like well we better find him before they find him. All right. And like all the evil characters have these big you know grins like oh we are so going to kill this guy who's been bossing us around. And Deadshot has a um very uh, creative way of interpreting those instructions. But anyway, that's... So issue 22. Campaign, good, good campaign issue. 88, people. That is, that is a fantastic issue. And I'll also say, I, I really... I liked the ending of the run. Like, the final few frames. Uh, I ended on an interesting, a good note. It, it, it encompasses a lot. I agree with that. And I think the one thing that's most interesting is it ran for five years, and you could argue... Almost every year of the series had a distinct feel. The first year they were 
this new group finding where they belong. The second year, they were trying to gain recognition because they had kind of been exposed. The third year, they had totally been exposed, and so now they were out in the public and they were trying to, you know, basically gain this public trust. And then things shift and they become this super covert where nobody knows who they are. They're no longer tied to anything. I um, mean, in the last year, they're kind of back to doing more of the, the bigger stories. Um, if, uh, I like your pick with the trial by fire because issue two is one of the best single issues. Mm-hmm. And, and if, if by the second or third issue, you're not like this is for me, you're probably not going to enjoy you get, the entire series. Much like the episode of Justice League Unlimited, you get the gist by the end of the first issue. Right. You, you, you know mm-hmm. how the series is going by that point. They, they give you everything you need to know early on. So, but uh, if I had to pick an issue, I'm partial to issue twenty, which is a Captain Boomerang centric issue. And um, frankly, uh, again, for those of us growing up in the '70s, has a bit of a feel of a Brady Bunch episode. But it's uh, it's a good one. And anyone remember the one where Peter had two dates and he was pretending to be two guys? <laughs> No. But. Anyway, the point is, it's a good, it's a fun book. Like I said, it's got really dark moments, but it's punctuated by some very funny bits, which kind yeah. of humanizes everybody. All right, mm-hmm. cool. I think that's our second longest episode, and we talked about one thing. So congratulations, this is good stuff. Hour and a half talking about the Suicide Squad. First time we had guests. Yeah, go get, go buy Suicide Squad number one. Yeah. yeah if, if if anything, this has solidified the rest of the trades coming up because interest in this book is going to go up. <laughs> Either that, or they'll hate. They're like, who are these other guys? Forget <laughs> that. And yeah. Turn off the podcast right away. All right. Well, Ryan Gage, thank you very very much. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys. Next time we will we'll probably have to have you know people have said you know try to have some other people on from time to time and it took us twenty four episodes but we finally did it so we'll we'll try to drag some so other we'll call you around episode forty eight yeah good yeah, for you yeah. yeah we'll talk to you another six months or so um, I think we're going to go ahead and uh, shut this episode off now and stop recording unless we got any, any you have to do the outro comments. You should listen to the Geek Box at www.geekbox.com. That's part of our outro. Was, oh, okay. I, give you, I do the typical. Oh, the typical. Okay. We don't even have a typical outro. It's like blah, 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 so blah, 20 blah. 20 minutes to be blabbing all right. stuff. Do uh, your outro. All right. Well, Take if us you out. like this episode, you can download this and all of our other episodes at www.geekbox.net, as well as every episode of the Geek Box, which uh, I'm on and Brock's on. Actually, Brock will be on next mm-hmm. week. I will not be on next week. I know. Week. I think that's the first time. It's one of the first. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have some a prior engagement uh ryan's on every week ryan here is the host uh gage is a, a great customer here at the store and i'm um, very knowledgeable and I'm, we'll hope to have you back on and talk about some other stuff because yeah you- this is it i don't i don't know anything else this well so <laughs> unless you're having a re-engagement about the suicide squad i think i'm done <laughs> but thanks for having me I, I, I mean big fan listen to the show love nice. the store nice so excellent uh if you want to send us any email questions uh you can email us at the comic conspiracy at geekbox.net or you can contact us through the contact form. Uh, we will run this contest uh, for this basically full run of the Suicide Squad. It's probably clocking close to 100 issues here. Um, just leave us a review on iTunes. I think I'll take any review after we put this episode up. We'll give it a few weeks. I'll kind of tally them all up together, and, and me and Brock will sit down, and, and we'll, we'll maybe Gage and, and Ryan here will pick a pick one that looks cool. All right. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You visit conspiratorbrock.blogspot.com. Brock's which will blog. hopefully have the reading list up for <laughs> the Suicide Squad. So if you don't happen to win this box of comic books, then you can track down the issues yourself or trades if they become available or were available. And I think we uh, talked about this a handful of times. And actually, I wouldn't be surprised if, if these issues start showing up there as well. But we also have the digital uh, storefront. Digital storefront, the, yeah. Through Comicology. Yeah. I'll see about linking it through yeah, at the reading list. I don't know if they have any up there, but it wouldn't surprise me if, if the, nothing, nothing, nothing yet. yet nothing yet. That that may be the thing that pushes me over. I'm such a fan. I'm like, well, I got to have this version too, <laughs> so I might buy it. Just gonna uh, visit uh, digital.comicsconspiracy.biz uh, if you are a fan of digital comics. If you're a fan of physical comics, we of course do mail order here, and you can order stuff and subscribe to the store as well. Um, I think we're gonna go ahead and call that an episode. We'll be back next week for. Uh, not Suicide Squad talk. Uh, 
probably some other stuff. No, we'll, we'll be we'll be talking more of the fifty two review what? stuff from this the you know last we'll, week and this we'll, week. We'll do. No, we'll probably have to do a lot more fifty two talk. But but again, you know, we've had some comments about like you know let me some a, comments. a little more Marvel. Some more comments. TV. So we'll probably have to have like a Marvel episode, an indie episode. We'll we'll, we'll kind of actually we'll steer away from DC for a few weeks after kind of this first batch of of, of new fifty two books is done because. Uh, there are other comics out there that we like, and I, I, as much as I kind of get the reputation of being a Marvel hater, I really don't hate Marvel. Um, and and I, I do want to say for a few people out there that are like, you know, oh, you hate Marvel so much, I, I just, just don't read. That's not enjoying a lot of it right now. But we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. Ryan Scott, on the other hand, hates Marvel. So yeah, they suck. <laughs> Except Astonishing X Men, <laughs> fantastic by your boy Joss Whedon. So all right, uh, we'll talk to everyone next.